we can compute the distance between two points, but can we also compute the distance between two functions? And we know when two vectors are orthogonal, but when are two functions orthogonal? And why would you be interested at all? Well, let us start with the second question. Suppose you want to approximate a nasty function f of x by an easier function, and you can choose either g of x or h of x. If you know how to compute distances between functions, you can compute the distance between f and g and between f and h, and you can judge which of the two will be the better approximation. And you can also compute your approximation error. And orthogonality, orthogonality is interesting because it will allow it, us to use similar projection formulas as we had for normal vectors. So that is the why question. Let us now turn to the how question. Remember that we use an inner product on Rn to compute angles and distances. So if you are able to generalize this concept to functions, we are able to compute distances and angles between functions. So in this video you will learn first what an inner product exactly is and what the properties are, so we will be able to generalize it later on. Well, suppose you have some vector space v and any two vectors u and v in our vector space. Then an inner product assigns a value, a real number, to any of those two vectors together. So you put in two vectors in your inner product and you get a number out. But not in any way. You have to satisfy a few properties in order to have an inner product. Some very useful properties. First of all, for a real inner product we have the symmetry. Uh, inner product between u and v is the same as inner product between v and u. And notice the notation here, we use the brackets around the inner product and not the dots between the vectors anymore. Then, second property, linearity property, which you want to hold. That means that you can take scalars out and you can take either addition first and then inner product of the other way around. So that's the second property over here, linearity. And then the third property is that the inner product with the vector with itself is always positive. Inner product of u with u has to be bigger or equal than zero, and it's only zero if u is zero. So equality holds if and only if u is zero. So it means uh, if the inner product of u with itself is zero, then u equals zero, and the inner product of the zero vector with itself has to be zero. So we have to satisfy those three properties. Well, let us look at a familiar example to see whether those properties actually hold. So take v equals r2 and take two arbitrary vectors u equals u1, u2 and v equals v1, v2 in r2. And let us take a look. What did we take as our inner products? Well, our inner product u, v, we took the first component of u times the first component of v plus the second component of u plus the second component of v. So two vectors go in and one number goes out. Well, let's look at the properties. We will only do uh, the uh, first and the third, and we will leave the second one as an exercise. What happens if we compute v in a product with u? Well, then we have to take the first component of v times the first component of u, plus the second component of v, plus the second component of u. So v1 u1 plus v2 u2. But all of those are just scalars, so you can uh, inverse the order. So that means that v1 u1 equals u1 v1, and v2 u2 is just u2 v2. So that's the same as u, v. So you see, symmetry holds. The most tricky, pro tricky property is usually the third one. So let's take a look at that one. Well, if you take the inner product of u with itself, then you get u1 times u1 plus u2 times u2. So u1 squared plus u2 squared. And the sum of two squares is always positive. And when is this zero? Well, you add two positive numbers, so it's only zero if both of those numbers are zero. So if u1 squared is zero and u2 squared is zero, so if u1 is zero and if u2 is zero. So if the 
uh, u is a zero vector. So you see the third and the third property hold for our familiar in our product. Of course, we knew our, this, this one already. Now we know which properties we have to satisfy, it, so we can generalize the concept of inner products to functions in the next video.